how you guys doing so today here we are we're doing our renovation walkthrough okay whoa look they can never keep me down i'm going and if i ever fail to snow i'll go again i never quit because i know that every loss may lead to another win i'm going up so today we have some some of our pp16 here today so they get the hands-on experience at least real life experience of what it looks like doing a real renovation all right so they can be more informed about the cosmetic aspect or what it would take in order to upgrade a house for a client when they're doing the walkthroughs on a regular buy and sell with their clients all right so here we are we have we have reggie we have mercedes enoch and jessica all right so y'all ready, ready. Yes, sir. Do it. Any questions before we go in? No. Nope. Not yet. No, not yet. Skip this. All right. It's gonna take a few minutes. No, like to finish the renovation. <laughs> oh, to do the renovation. That aspect, um, a couple weeks. We should be done in like three weeks. So we're gonna go through the front door. Let's go through the front door. So, what we have, all right, hey there. Don't, don't mind us, so what we have here is, um, we're, in, we're doing a full renovation, all right, so we're doing a full renovation as far as we're moving the kitchen countertops, we're moving this island, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We're, we're moving this island, um, so the, the details about this kitchen island is that it has, it has three components. The three components, right? The three components are the dishwasher, your garbage disposal, and your GFI outlet. But those three components, they all need their own power supply. So with that being said, this wall actually runs the power supply to those three components. And that's why you see that there's a T right there accessing this island. Other than that, it would not need uh, this T right here because it's not a low bearing wall. All right. So the key to removing this island is that we have to, uh, we have to be careful about those three power supplies that's running through here. So once we remove the wall, we're gonna have to cap those wires off and put a junction box in the, in the wall there. So therefore, and um, they're also, let me come, come over here. So in order for us to get power, back to this island after they remove it we are going to put a junction box up in the wall all right we gonna put a junction box up in the wall and then they're going to trim out a four inch a four inch um trail here and they're going to put piping up under the concrete up under the foundation and so once this is removed that the floor guys are going to come in and they're going to lay the flat the tile floor but once the flooring is gone then they're going to come in and run the wires fish the wires through the pipes that have been put under the country. And then we're gonna put a new island here. And so the, the wires will be able to come back in and furnish the power supplies here. But it's very important to understand that there's three power supplies. So when the electrical guy get here, he has to make sure that there's a, um, um, a breaker, a breaker for each one of those power supplies. So it's GFI, garbage disposal, garbage disposal and dishwasher to make sure that they have their own power supply. So when we put the, um, the outlet, the junction box up under the island, that he continues to, to make sure that it runs current straight to the breaker, right? And then they, um, they jump it from the junction box to each power supply. So the island will still have power once it's, once it's installed. So if you have any emergency and stuff like that, you can just go straight Yeah. Yeah, so if you have an emergency or the breaker trip or whatnot, like wet areas were on the on the counter with the GFI, that that breaker trips. All right, that the breaker trips keep from any electrical uh, issues. Okay, so we'll go back here and all right, they're still working over there, so we're gonna go this way. All right, in this bathroom, in this bathroom, as you can see, all right, they've already removed. This cabinet, all right, this vanity, they removed it. It was a tub and you know, they, they cut all that stuff out. What we're doing is we're moving the plumbing up. So we're moving the plumbing up. So therefore it's it's a better height. It's a better height for somebody who's taller. 
because when, when it comes out, this, this tend to be a whole lot shorter. So it came out, so we're moving that up like six inches. So therefore somebody who taller can sit, stand in the shower and have a shower and not the, the shower head won't be below the head. Okay. So we're moving it up. All right, and then because of that, we also will be moving these up as well. So at least, you know, on waist height, so it's not at the, at the bottom, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, this one. So the, the importance of removing these vanities, and like I was explaining to RJ earlier, the tile is 24 by 48. We want to minimize any cuts that they have to do with the tile because with a four, 24 by 48, if there's any errors, you miss, you, you're, wa you're wasting a lot of uh, material because you got to go back and recut it. All right, so with, with, with these being moved, they can lay all the tile down and we can come back and place the vanities on top of the tiles when it's all said and done. But it, it limits the cuts that's necessary. Okay, so that's this bathroom. Now this other one over here. Same thing. And another thing that we look at, another thing that we're, we're looking at when we, are, when we come into the bathroom, especially when they cut it out, I'm looking for leaks behind the vanities. So I'm looking for leaks behind the vanities. Um, here, same thing. I'm looking to make sure everything is dry, all right? We wanna make sure everything is dry so therefore there's no issues going on behind the wall before we invest money in rebuilding this shower, all right? So as you can see, everything is already dry. So we're, we're gonna be putting a tub and we're gonna go up with a shower, but I have a whole list of items that I gotta get like door rock and different things, waterproofing. So this bathroom will be waterproof when they come in and rebuild it, okay? okay. Now this other bathroom over here, the third and final bathroom. So th this, this bathroom here was a stand-up shower. All right, and they cut the stand-up shower and they're gonna rebuild it. They're gonna rebuild it from ground up. So now you're seeing the actual phase. So once they are all done today, I'm gonna to go to Lowe's and I'm gonna get all the, the, the materials they need so they can come back and finish building out these showers tomorrow. So you're very handsome. Yes, 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 okay. So we can go outside to the pool. With the pool area, as you can see, the pool needs to be resurfaced. So this will be the last and final thing that we do once we've completed on the inside. Um, actually, we're actually already looking at um, shopping out companies now to have the pool resurfaced. But if you could tell, there's already spots that's already been sanded down. That tells me that they've already started the process. And it seems like before they sold the house, they went on ahead and put the water back in the pool to sell it as is because they had to drain the pool out in order to sand this down before. If not, it would look like this. See how you have the plaster that's already coming off? Yeah. That's how it looks when water gets behind the pool plaster. All right, so here, you can tell it's already been sanded down. All right, so uh, um, this this particular job here, you're looking anywhere from five to $7,000 to resurface the pool five to seven thousand so this is the, one of the biggest fences that that we knew was how to take on but we knew it ahead of time but the, the deal with the pool is that you know it adds value when you're talking about short-term rental and then we're going to add the a pool heater back it had a pool heater before but it seemed like they somebody removed the pool heater so we're going to add the pool heater back again so it just adds a better experience for the airbnb once to get it back up and then we're also going to put landscaping for the privacy on the back side so it have a um so better enjoyment. But this is the outside. Now, back on the inside, one of the things that we, uh, we're we gonna do when it comes to selling point, right? When it comes to selling point, we have a fluorescent light, all right? And we have all these other lights. One of the things we wanna do is we wanna add more of the hi-hats, all right? just so we can get more lighting and we want to use LED lighting so it saves on the energy bill. So that's one of the things we want to brighten up. So once we remove this wall, now we know that that kitchen is going to be the center focus. So all of our details and enhancements when we come in here is going to be focused on the kitchen. So therefore that will always be the selling point for all of our um, um, photos, for listings, rentals, the kitchen is going to be the selling point. All right, any questions?
So you said you're doing the back one. Mm -hmm. You're gonna create. You're gonna keep two showers and one tub. I'm mm -hmm. assuming you're keeping the tub for. Children, Absolutely. So you always want to have at least one tub in the house, but we're keeping two tubs and we're making them stand-up showers. That's why we're moving all the plumbing up. So we're making both tubs stand-up showers, but we're keeping two tubs so you have access for, yeah, we're keeping two tubs and then one stand-up shower, which is the, the master bathroom. So over here you said there's the Yeah, so they got a chisel, they got a hammer drill and a chisel, which are gonna chisel out the concrete. And then they're gonna come back and after they put the pipe in there, they're gonna put the concrete there and let it settle out and and heat and, and um and cure out. So then when the flooring people come, they're gonna come and lay tile on everything so you won't be able to see any of the any of the defects of the concrete being chiseled or anything. But we would lose the access to the to the wiring, so we have to run it under the country. So how does it I mean you got a junction box on this side and the junction box on this side. So you have access on both on both parts to the wires. That's why you put the junction box on that side and this side to, to, to have access. So we can add more outlets. So we have a, a electrical outlet on um, power supply. That's why we have three power supplies. You have the electrical outlet, which will be connected to the GFI. All right, and then you have the garbage disposal and also the dishwasher um, power. So therefore, if the garbage disposal trip it won't, it won't uh, trip the breaker for the electrical outlets or the electrical outlets trip, it won't trip the breaker for the garbage disposal and also the dishwasher. Okay. How big is the island building? Oversize. <laughs> Oversize. Kind of We're gonna do quartz. quartz. Yeah, quartz. White, white quartz countertops. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your strategy behind picking this home? Uh, yeah, what made you go here? So, um, for one, low HOA. That was the most important part, low HOA, and then the proximity from here to Disney. It approximately takes anywhere from 15 to 17 minutes direct access to Disney. We drove it the other night. Um, you can go out here, make a left, go down two lights, make a right, take a back road. It's gonna bring you out on 192, past all the traffic. All right, and you're gonna come out like similar, so, somewhere by that Wawa, and then you know, you're only 10 minutes from Disney from there. And so just quick proximity to Disney from here, low HOA, and you know, you're in a gated community. It's just, it gives you all, because the biggest thing here in you know, this particular area, I mean, everybody want to be close by Disney. A lot of people want to do the Airbnb, but a lot of the HOAs have resort fees. So they have the amenities and so forth, and they hit you with a $600 resort fee. And that's what makes a lot of the, HO, a lot of the Airbnbs not perform as well as something like this. And then some of the, a lot of the Airbnbs also, so a lot of the new ones, they have Airbnb management companies that's inside the communities and they force you to go through their management company and they make all the Airbnbs alike, meaning they furnish them the, the same. So your Airbnb won't stand out amongst anybody else's. So you're gonna get average returns because everybody that they manage will be in the same program. So you get average returns. So this allow us more flexibility to be able to increase our prices and maximize our returns with our own creativity and make our Airbnb stand out amongst others. So how do you find if the HOA allows um, Airbnb? Airbnb? So first and foremost, we reached out to the Airbnb, to the HOA prior to purchasing and we confirmed that this HOA allowed Airbnb. So it does allow for short-term rentals. They do have some restrictions as for you can't park on the side of the road, all vehicles have to be in, on, in the driveway, and, uh, and they uh, limit your Airbnb um, stay to one family per stay. How they know if it's only one family, I don't know, but that's there. But we, we got all the restrictions ahead of time, so we knew what we were getting into prior to purchasing this property. first Airbnb. Now, um, what I was explaining to Reggie earlier is that this year we've had, over the last year and a half, we've had the uh, opportunity to 
sell a lot of Airbnbs or multiple Airbnbs to some of our clients and we've been able to see the numbers on those Airbnbs, but we also understand the nuances that they ran into with their Airbnbs, so such as the HOA, such as being in a you know conforming property management program, right? And then also being in an overall blanket management program that they have a management fee on top of the other rental, rental fees, which, so in those types of programs, you get like 40% return, some of them 30% return off of your investment. All right, and so this allows us to get 100% return on our investments and it allows us to be able to set the tone of the purchasing. So how much are we expecting to get from this property um, a day? Our average is from 225 to 250 and we're, we're hoping to be able to get it up to 300 during peak season. So we started the renovation um, what is this, on Monday, which they started with the floors, but we had them to hold off on the floors so we can get the bathrooms done. All right, they're gonna be done with the bathrooms by next week. They should be done with the floors by the end of this weekend. So the flooring and all the main components and stuff should be done by next weekend. And this property should be ready to go. Um, I don't know about the pool aspect yet because we haven't got a company to confirm when they can come out and resurface the pool but everything else should be done with this property before the end of this month. So have you already started um, your website, like booking? No, no, no. We, we haven't started that yet, and I know that we got to go through and get this house, get this house licensed for Airbnb. You have to get a license? You have to get a license, a business license for Airbnb in this community. And we also got to add the safety door. Um, there's a, a safety, um, yep. So you gotta be able to hit the button, yep. So we gotta put the, all the safety features. So once they finish all the renovations, we're gonna come through with our safety checklist. And we're gonna you know, put a punch list and we're gonna give it to our guy to come in and add all the safety features that we need in order to be in compliance with the Airbnb requirements. That's it, let me, all right, so. Here we are guys, we're, we're finishing up our tour of our renovation walkthrough. Um, I know we answered a lot of questions during this tour, but I think it was a great experience. So you're getting straight in the field uh, tour. It's live, it's raw, but. Um